Today we're going to be talking about the five beginning editing skills that are perfect for kindergarten or any beginning writers. And I also say readers because most of the time your readers and your writers that are just starting to learn to use the language or the letter sound connections are the same in reading and writing. Before we begin or while we're waiting for some friends to join us, if anyone is here live with me today, I would love it if you would put in the comments how you feel about editing with your students and how you do it. Remember one means you got it, you are on the ball, you know exactly what you're doing. Then we say two is the silver and twos are, yeah, you're pretty good, but you can use a few tips here or there. And three is you really don't understand editing, how to do it with young students and you need a lot of help. And there's no judgment here ever because that is some things for everyone where you just need a little bit more help. Doesn't mean you're not doing it. Doesn't mean you're not trying. Just means you need lots of help. So just to review again, one, you are on the ball. You know what you're doing. Two, you need a little bit of help. You kind of understand it, but you could use some tips and advice. And three, you are needing lots of advice and you keep trying but you're not really sure what you're doing. You may be shooting in the dark. All right, so let's get started with the very basic things that kindergarten or beginning readers and writers need to be able to do or should focus on in their writing. Remember, editing is the last step after you brainstorm. Um, and that's where you're thinking about your story and what you include in it. And then you actually write your story and you do your draft. And then you might revise it. Someone might have you write more on it. Or um, you might be able to answer a question that somebody does. And I hope you watch. I will have ideas for how to do all those things. I hope you've seen them. But then comes the editing. And the editing is kind of the part that you don't want people to skip. Because writing is one of the subjects. You've got reading and writing two of those things. Writing is one of those that students are going to be using in all aspects of their life, in all academic parts of their life, their personal life, their professional life. No matter what it is, there's some kind of writing that has to take place. So you want students to be able to do it, but you can't expect them to do everything in kindergarten. So what do we expect from kindergarten students? Well, we want to see a capital letter at the beginning of the sentence. That's really difficult to do when sometimes that's all they write is capital letters. But we always want to check that and make sure it is capital. We want to make sure there's some kind of punctuation at the end of the sentence. And that's usually a period, a question mark, and an exclamation point. A lot of times the students understand that when they're reading, what those mean, and you talk about that during guided reading, but when they're writing, sometimes all they'll put in there is a period. And sometimes there'll be periods in every part of the piece of writing, in, in between every word. That happens, that's okay. You just want them focusing on it. And question marks, that's the hardest. They really don't understand kind of what questions are yet, but if they put one in there, you know they are working on it. So first we have capital letter at the beginning of their sentence, punctuation at the end, using a capital I. Anytime I stands alone, it should be the capital I. And that is really tricky because yes, it is in there in some, con some contractions, but don't focus on that. Just kind of say, if you said I, I love my mom, it should be capital. Beginning letter, capital, ending punctuation, capital I. And to go along with that, I also encourage students to make sure that they put a capital letter for any names of any family or friends. You're starting to get them into the idea that names get capital letter. And if you focus on family and friends because they are special to them, they'll start doing that. And one of the ways I say it, if you're writing that mom, I love you, that's your mom's name, and mom is special. Special things get capital letters, and then they'll learn special names get capital letters, and then it'll eventually, eventually they'll understand that names get capital letters. But beginning readers and writers just need to know that special people 
get capital letters. And then the very last one, and I'm going to go over here and check more just to see before we get started. Oh, it's not letting me do anything. Okay, so we have the capital I at for when it's themselves, the capital at the beginning of their sentence, punctuation at the end of the sentences, um, a capital letter for special names, and then comes the hardest. Once they're really writing kind of on their own and they got the sound symbol relationship down, you will start to see capital letters in between their words. So you may see all capital A's in there. In fact, let me tell you a story. Just this week, one of my very best writers, this child can write a story at the beginning and middle and end. He's writing nonfiction stories. He spells almost every word correctly. I can actually pick it up and read about five or six sentences that he wrote easily. He had a capital A in everything. So we've been talking about that for a while and um, in a few minutes, I'll explain how I have them edit and what I do in that procedure. But every time I celebrate, I'll say, congratulations, they have lowercase letters in the word and, because they didn't have them other places. But as we were talking about that, I said, now look at the way when I published it, I said, look at my letter and, and what do you notice about the difference? And he said, well, yours has a lowercase letter. And I said, yeah, you wanna really work on making them lowercase, remember, inside of words. And so innocently, he looked at me and he said, well, I'm just not very good at making those lowercase a's, so I just made them all capital. Well, guess what? That's a teaching point. So then I got out some lined paper and in writing, yes, it is editing, I showed him how to make a lowercase a easily following those lines. I had him practice it a few times. Then every day this week I said, oh, by the way, Joey, I need you to make five of those lowercase a's, see if you can do it. And he had no problem and he's learning how to do it. So hopefully next week I'm gonna see lowercase a's in his writing. So you really want to focus on those five things. So one more time, a capital I when it's I, a capital letter for special people, a capital letter at the beginning of a sentence, all lowercase letters in the rest of the sentence, and some kind of punctuation at the end. Those are the editings that the students try to do and that I really focus on. So now the second part of it, how do I focus on that? Well, you know, I always celebrate somebody's writing in, this, in the classroom every day. So every day somebody gets a celebration. So I will say, today we're going to celebrate Levi. Everybody look at his picture, I hold it up and we all give him a round of applause. And I'll say, listen to this great story. And in the celebration, I read the story and I do that on purpose so the students hear the fluency of a reader reading a story. Then I always tell them the great things that the child is doing in their story, and I always focus on those editing things. He used a capital I, he has punctuation at the end. I do throw in, there are spaces between his words that made it easy. You can't really edit for that, but I always add that in the celebration. He spelled the word the, go, and my correctly, whatever words are spelled correctly. Then, what you wanna do is just take a whiteboard or on your whiteboard and write one of the sentences that he did. And then go through and say, here's how he wrote the sentence. The dog is my friend. How many words? Five. Remember, always focusing on phonemic awareness. Let's take a look at the word the that he wrote. Do you see a capital T? All right, so if we don't see that and I write right over capital T's, I say, I just write right over it and make it a capital with a different color. That tells my brain that I need to remember that next, the next time. Now let's look at this whole sentence. Is there punctuation at the end? If there is, we celebrate the fact that it's there. If there's not, I will say, is that a telling sentence? Or I might say, that is a telling sentence, it gets a period. Then let's look at all these other letters. 
are they all lowercase except names? So there are no names in here, so I don't have to worry about that, but let's look, are they all lowercase? And if there's a capital in there, say, oh, here's the capital. Let's write right over it with a different color and make that lowercase because we always write lowercase in the middle of a sentence unless we want that word to pop. And then comes the important part. So once I celebrate and we do that, I say, okay, I'm going to set the timer for one minute and I want you just to pick out one story and I want you to edit it. I want you to look for capital letters. I want you to look for punctuation at the end. I want you to make sure it's all lowercase and side words and just write right over top of it. Are you ready? Ready, set, go. And sometimes it takes longer. As soon as I start to see them not paying attention and it's too much, I stop. It could be 30 seconds. It could be two minutes, depending on their attention. And then when they're finished, I'm like, okay, it's time to put those away and we're ready for our next fun activity. And tomorrow when you write, try to remember all of those things. So the point is you're letting them write and you're not worrying about it. Once they revise or they edit, they're sure it's ready to be finished. And they want you to publish it and you underwrite it. You talk about those editing things. What are they? Capital letter at the beginning of the sentence. Capital I when you're talking about yourself. Capital letters for special people. That means special things to them. All other lowercase letters and punctuation at the end of the sentence. Then you want to do a little mini model lesson. Show them what it looked like. See if they can fix it. And also don't forget your celebrations. Remember the writing process can be so easy. This is the part that we do just during writing time. We don't often worry about all of these things if we're writing in response to reading or we're writing in response to science or social studies or math. We just write to get our ideas on paper right now. If you continue to really draw their attention to these five editing skills, as they get into the upper grades, it will start to make a lot more sense when those teachers start explaining all the other important things that are in their writing. So once again, I'm Deborah Marinas. I hope you join me every Wednesday at 6.30 for a little teacher talk. If you want to DM me on Instagram or put a comment here or send me a message with any questions or um, things that you might need a little help on, I am always here and I will research it for you and find the answer. And your question may just be spotlighted here.